I wanted to see what's in this envelope as a starting point in today's mailbag because it's kind of heavy feeling. I wonder if there's something substantial. Oh, these are those Wago, Wago, whatever style connectors. Yeah, that's heavy. Now, I'm not sure if there's a difference between the blue and the yellow, or if it's a different rating, or just preference. I ordered this stuff a long time ago, and it's been coming in gradually, so I think I opened some of these recently. Of course, all the contacts here are in common, and you just open up the lever and put in a wire and close it. And then you've got contact. So that's used a lot for thick wiring like household wiring to make quick connections. But it also works for components with heavy leads as well. If you just need to, for the sake of convenience, make a common junction, especially it could be a ground junction and you just want to put a bunch of things together. Or if you have a power supply and you're bringing the wires over to these and then you have a bunch of grounds and a bunch of VCCs that you can distribute out to a breadboard or something. I just figured I wanted to get a collection of these because they can be useful for all kinds of purposes. And here's a couple of things that I believe belong together, so I'm going to open them at the same time. Here we have some micro SD sockets for surface mount PCB attachment. I have a couple of micro SD modules that you can plug into a project, but I am working on a PCB that can use one of these sockets right on board. And to go with this, because the SD cards are 3.3 volt, and I may be working with 5 volt Arduinos, 74LVC125. And these are basically 3.3 volt buffers that have 5 volt tolerant inputs, so you can connect it up between a 5 volt Arduino and a 3.3 volt SD card. And since these SD card sockets are surface mount, I might as well be working entirely in surface mount for at least that part of a PCB. And for the same project that these SD card parts are going on, if this is what it's supposed to be, I think it is. These are those extra small 2.5 millimeter audio jacks, or I guess they could be other purposes. And in fact, the purpose I need these for, those old cassette recorders from decades ago may have had something like a 3.5 millimeter regular microphone audio input to record, but also these smaller 2.5 millimeter that you can use to start and stop automatically, maybe with a switch on the microphone itself or something like that. So I'm going to be working on a project involving that sort of concept, using this as a remote start for something that I want to turn on and off. This will all come together soon. I'm working on a couple of PCBs, so for now I'm just going to keep these bundled somewhere that I know where to find them when I need to. But something I'm going to need very soon, the next PCB project. This is supposed to be some IC sockets, and it's lightweight even though it's bulky, so it seems about right, and I can't really see through that bubble wrap. And I'm surprised all this stuff I ordered at the same time, and it came here in only two weeks, so I can actually put these projects together sooner than I expected. Normally it would take minimum three weeks if I got lucky. So yes, these are what look like, I think, 28 pin and 40 pin dip. And I've already recently made this 40 pin dip sound generator AY38910 PCB, plus I still have these 40 pin MT8816 multiplexer chips I want to put to use at some point. So I think I only had maybe two of these 40 pin sockets, so I ordered more. I find it hard to get this plastic wrap off, but I guess it keeps the pins 
in the best possible condition for not getting bent, except maybe the ones on the end. But it's really these 28 pin sockets that I need soon. Basically, now that I have all this new old stock, even totally unopened stuff like a bunch of EEPROMs, I think now's a good time to do some old retro ROM cartridge and that sort of EEPROM stuff. Who would have thought I'd have a use for relatively small amount of storage space EEPROM hardware? Well, if you use it for something that it was originally intended for back in the same era, suddenly these are useful. In fact, I've already made a PCB cartridge which takes one of these EEPROMs. So, if things go well, this will be the next PCB project video. And by putting this EEPROM on here, this is going to go into one of those old retro early 80s computers, which brings us to the next bunch of things to look at briefly in this mailbag. So, back when I had shown all these Radio Shack parts, I also said there's a lot more stuff, but this is just an overview. So, some of the other stuff I received last month is another bunch of Radio Shack stuff, including a bunch of computers. There's a Tandy TRS-80 Color Computer 1 and 2. It's too bad there's no Coco 3 because I think they greatly improved the graphics by then. But either way, I'm going to try to get this cartridge to work on a Coco 2 because those had a side cartridge slot and when you plug in a cartridge and boot up, it just immediately runs whatever's on the cartridge, whether it's a game or a software application. And I also have in this collection a Coleco game system and a Tandy 2500, which is in this case a 386SX 25 megahertz, and it has a three and a half and five and a quarter inch floppy drive. And I've opened this thing up and checked it out and it does run and everything is very clean inside. There's really no dust. I think it was in storage for a long time. So it looks like we're doing a lot of retro stuff lately and hopefully having the ability now to use all these old parts can help bring new life to the actual computers and game consoles from that era. Otherwise, I'm just going to do what? Power up a Coco? It's going to be sitting there at a basic programming prompt. And what do I do with it if I don't have any cartridges of my own and I don't have a way to load from disc or tape? So a lot of retro fun coming in the near future to get all these things running. As always, thanks to Patreon and channel supporters, and if you like this sort of retro stuff, come back and see what we're going to be doing with all these parts and computers.